We are all on a search for something. And that something is meaning. Every single one of us has this innate desire in us to know what's the meaning of life, to find this thread of meaning in everything we do and everything we say and how we act and how we treat other people. We want to believe that there's a deeper meaning behind all of it. But what is it and how in the world can we find it? Welcome to Midweek at the Compass. My name is Jake. It's great to be back here with you today. And I feel like when I talk about weighty subjects like this, uh, when we talk through these philosophical concepts, it's good to have somebody with me who actually knows what they're talking about. So today, I've got my friend Gerald DeLoren. Gerald, what's happening? Nothing much. Hey, thanks again for the invite. Uh, I like the setup. This is awesome. So thank you once again for the invite. I like talking about this stuff. This stuff really interests me. And um, I think uh, there's a whole generation out there, tons of people who actually are searching for meaning. They just do it in different ways. Interesting. Yeah. 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 So you think this probably goes across generational lines as much as anything too, right? You know, from my kids who are young, probably to those who are facing uh, uh, the end of their life, um, this is a, a topic that if you could process and understand early enough, you could also figure out more and more how to live a life worth living. Interesting. All right. I had never thought about the, you know, end of life scenario with all this. There's still a search for meaning in everything, right? Everything. When you're in your last days, you want to know was what I've done with my time worth it? What's next? Is there a next? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Man, there's a lot, there's a lot there that we yeah. could start unpacking. Yeah. So why don't we just jump right into it? Let's start unpacking some of this, right? Like, what do we see right now? You know, what's going on in society and culture um, that we can look to for maybe a subset or of how people are trying to find meaning with their life, right? Like, what are some examples that we can look towards? Yeah, yeah. You know, it wasn't until uh, grad school doing a lot of deep philosophical thinking that I purposefully started thinking about the meaning of life, its purposes, uh, this search for is there is, is everything going to be okay? What is it? Uh, what is it to life? But I would say, as you look around, maybe as uh, people who are listening in, as they're looking around, it doesn't seem people are thinking about these deep concepts, right? They're kind of living their life, right? You kind of see that, right? It's it's uh, interesting. Oh, totally. Yeah. I, I mean, I can't sit here and say that every day. I think. What is the meaning of life? Um, I don't have time for yeah. things like that. Yeah. Uh, I just. Ultimately, I have values. I have a system of belief. Um, I have kind of those things, but I can't say that I'm sitting there searching for meaning. So I'm really curious of where you're driving at there. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, I would say if you, especially those of you who are uh, involved in uh, uh, social media, looking at how people live digitally, maybe there's some influencers out there that you look to. Maybe it's uh, a thinker that has a YouTube uh, video uh, series or or maybe it's a, a fitness workout person. Whatever it may be, um, you uh, th these people have a certain way about themselves. They're passionate about a certain subject, if you will. Um, and it, it leads to that question, what are they most passionate about? For them, what are they out there for? Why do they exist? And I would say that depending on their channel, they're, they ha they're living their lives for that very purpose, whether it's fitness, whether it's uh, adventurous. Um, I kind of look around at uh, a lot of these uh, social media pages and I see all these people traveling the world, skydiving in this remote part of the world, climbing Mount Everest, sitting on a beach drinking a pina colada living their best living life. their best life and it's hard for me you know uh having older kids uh trying to work with my wife working as well trying to take care of the household you kind of look at these and you're kind of you're envious right it's kind of envious you're like oh man but ultimately if you think about it they have they're searching for meaning and they're living it out in a certain way and so they too are expressing their search for meaning and they have answers to how, how they search for it um, that might be different from how we search for it, but it's ultimately they're still searching for meaning. 
So you're saying somebody that's Instagram famous for a travel account, they're looking to find meaning in life or potentially looking to find meaning or displaying that the meaning of their life is all of these exotic locations that they get to go to. Um, I mean, there's some great Instagram accounts uh, that are, are worthwhile for just, you know, people traveling the world, seeing the Maldives, like, man, we're recording this in the middle of winter. I want to be sitting on a beach um, sometime really, really, yeah, soon. really soon. I just, really soon. I, you know, I don't think it's going to happen. So those pictures don't really help me. No, they don't. <laughs> but they are displaying this, this, this fact that they're searching for meaning and they're trying to live it out the best way they can. I would even go so far out there to say there's a lot of people out there. You know, we might view them as living a wrong type of lifestyle, but they're trying to live that meaning that they're searching for the, the best way they can. Um, I would argue, though, that if they could really understand this search, um, I think they'd be living a different type of life. Yeah, and that's really interesting, too, because social media always gives the, the appearance of perfect, right? Like, so we are starting as a society to define what's good based on what we're seeing other people do and say. Um, Quite frankly, a lot of times we let other people think for ourselves, which is just super dangerous and super convenient. Uh, it's really easy to let Gerald do all the heavy lifting on the topping like this and me just show up and be like, yeah, oh, okay, yeah, that sounds yeah, great. Yeah. Um, but it, it almost makes it hard to define what's good in a digital lifestyle is, because everything everyone displays is their best. Their best, their best. And, you know, I, I'm in a different lifestyle. I mean, in my uh, my early days, right after college, um, I was DJing. Um, I I had dreams and ambitions. I my truth was to be successful. Uh, my truth was uh, my search for meaning at the time was to have as much fun as I can, get all the experience. Um, I always feared that I was gonna miss out on some of the greatest experiences that uh, that is out there, and I wanted to experience. At all. And so uh, another thing that I valued uh, was freedom. I didn't want anyone telling me what to do. I kind of wanted to go out, be free, live on my own and do what I wanted to do. And in one sense, that was my search for meaning. Um, I held these values up um, and I've come to the conclusion that there is right there in my lifestyle, in my way of being, um, uh, my way of of displaying meaning in my life but now it's different right and uh, I'm a parent I'm a husband um, my kids are getting older and I'm starting to process this more where am I at in life um, now it's kind of like I want to provide well I want to achieve well and I'm pretty sure you as a as a as a parent as a husband you want to do well for your family and so your search for meaning, you start to answer it in different ways, right, Jake? Oh, totally. So, I mean, we've talked about it on midweeks before here, but um, I, I'm not just the achiever a lot of times. I want to be the overachiever. Um, I'm the one who thinks like, you know, if I'm not the one doing it, it's either not going to get done or it's not going to get done correctly. Uh, and that's a leadership fault. So uh, it's one that I've had to be working on for a long time, but all through high school, college, I mean, I was the straight A student because I wanted to prove to myself probably in some ways that I knew what I was doing. I could handle it. I was the best, you know, pick your poison. That was me. And that bled into my professional life too. So I would, um, I took a job and I kept trying to climb the corporate ladder and really wanted to not just provide for my family, not just achieve. Mm. Um, I wanted to be successful. Mm. Um, I don't, I don't like middle of the pack concepts. I don't ever want to do anything and just kind of skate by. Uh, if I don't have the time to do it as well as I possibly can, quite frankly, it's really hard for me to, um, <laughs> get the gumption to want to even start yeah. because I just don't like the half measures or the average or the just okay. Mm. Um, I want things to be great. Mm. Um, so, you know, you talked about how you were searching for meaning in living a lifestyle that you want. I, I searched for meaning, living a lifestyle for a while of how do I 
succeed? Mm. Mm. How do I be the best that I can be? Yeah. We actually got to talk a little bit about success last week on Midweek. So feel free to pause this at any point in time. You can jump back to last week's episode. Mm-hmm. Um, talk a little bit. A guy named John Maxwell has a really great definition for success. I'd encourage you to go back, find it. Um, some good information there. Yeah. But yeah. that was me. Yeah. Overachiever to a T. Mm. Hashtag Enneagram one. All of you ones out there. <laughs> Great to see you. <laughs> yeah. No. And, you know, being uh, trained in philosophy and theology, I start to see the undercurrents, the whys to uh, why people act. What is there? And what I've come to the conclusion is this search for meaning really is broken down into, for me, what is truth? For me, what is good? For me, what is beautiful? Everyone answers that question. So when I was living that kind of free lifestyle, um, for me, what am I willing to live and die for? What was it, right? And that's really interesting yeah. because that's a thread that goes across generations, that goes across lines of ethnicity. Mm-hmm. It goes across socioeconomic lines. Um, there's That thread, it was present in what we just talked yeah, about, right? Very much so. If there's meaning, meaning is found in truth and in goodness and in beauty. So how did we see that play out in just a couple of examples that we talked about? Yeah. If we're just looking at, you know, maybe not Gen Z and millennial yeah. and boomer and Gen X. I didn't forget about you, Gen X. <laughs> uh, I know that's a common misconception yeah, that yeah. they're just a forgotten, no, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, um, yeah. but ultimately, like, you know, we decided to land on kind of a digital lifestyle and overachieving lifestyle. Quite frankly, you could pick just about any lifestyle that you're living here. So ultimately, you know, we picked those two. How do we see those three aspects of finding meaning play out yeah, in those? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that lifestyle, what, you know, for truth, ultimately, I'm going to live the life I'm going to live based on, is this worth it for me? Right? Hmm. It's kind of this lifestyle. Is it worth it for me? Um, is what's beautiful is all the experiences, all the adventures for me, that was my search for beauty. I wanted to experience the world. I wanted to experience even people of different cultures. And what's good for me at that time was freedom. For me, I overemphasized freedom. No one was going to tell me what to do. And what was good was me making my own choices. For you, if you were to kind of uh, talk about truth, goodness, beauty, how would you have answered those questions based on your lifestyle oh man truth yeah. would have been success uh very easily looked at as monetary success and professional success um i'll own personally at times that work made family take a back seat more than i would really mm-hmm. care mm-hmm. to admit yeah. um please don't take that the wrong way i love my family i love my wife and my kids Um, But there are times in my life where the way I was acting was I had deadlines and project work. And don't get me wrong, right? Like that's not completely in the past a lot of time. It's a work in progress. progress, Um, But the way that I was acting, the way that I was treating my family and the way that I was looking into things, Mm. um, truth was success from a corporate level. That was what I was searching Mm -hmm. for. Mm -hmm. For goodness, uh, how did you you think what was good? What was... Uh, in your mind frame, what's good? Oh, what's good was my billing level at a consulting firm, right? (laughs) Uh, Job title (laughs) meant that I was doing really well. Um, I can think that I started out at a certain level and um, especially at my most recent company before um, coming to work alongside Mm -hmm, you here, mm -hmm. I was in the consulting realm of things and was able to see what level I started at, uh, what level they thought I was at and was able to bill out at just meant I had a certain amount of knowledge and expertise, um, you know, being well thought of all of those sorts of things. So to me being good, um, again, I'll own it, right? Enneagram one, your, your desire is to be good. Uh, It's to, live the right way it, mm-hmm. it's those kind of things and a lot of the times that meant success yeah. it meant yeah. where do i yeah. fit in the hierarchy and uh, for you beauty uh if you were to think about beautiful what was beautiful in that type of lifestyle oh man honestly it's not all that different from you know what you were living or the digital lifestyle if we mm-hmm. want to put it that way um 
the search for beauty was like the material things. It might not be um, the Instagram account, but it would mean let's go take an all inclusive vacation. Mm, those are lovely. Oh right. man. I, uh, yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> they are. Uh, but it, it could have also meant, you know, like the new car paying off debt quickly. Um, one, that's a good principle to live yeah. out anyways, but, uh, there's something too when you're wired the way that I am, when you want to appear successful that, Oh yeah, I had a car payment that was supposed to last me five years. Well, guess what? <laughs> Paid it off in two and a half. <laughs> I know, right? I get excited about really boring things. Yeah. Uh, again, I build spreadsheets. Uh, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I get to see how it enacts in real time, but, yeah. um, yeah. that's how I know that there's beauty, right? Yeah. It's still truly like the lifestyle aspect of what have I earned? Yep. What do I have? And then what does that allow me to display? Yeah, that's good. You know, at, at some point, uh, whatever lifestyle, however you answer that question of what is true for you, what is beautiful for you and what is good for you, you're going to come into a, a season of conflict. I'm going to read a few uh, philosophers. Nietzsche, uh, says, he who has a why to live can endure the how. Okay, unpack that for me a little yeah, bit. Yeah, so um, if you understand why you are here, you're going to be able to handle how you live your life and whatever comes your way. And I, I believe next week's episode, we're going to talk about that, unpack that a little more. Yeah. But this idea of truth, if it's grounded in a solid why, the rest of your life, you're going to be able to handle how you're going to live it. So there's a why behind everything that we there's do. A why there's that allows us to live out a how. Yep. There's Interesting. A, yeah. Okay. The second thing, uh, beauty. Uh, an English professor, David Foster Wallace, says, um, uh, "And goodness, sorry, goodness. This is a generation that has an inheritance of absolutely nothing as far as meaningful values come." nothing and so what's interesting that he says this is that there's no real objective goodness that just this generation really looks towards and so it's everyone does their own thing and that's really that's pretty hard because one side of a spectrum might say this is good and what you're doing is bad and another side of a spectrum is this is good what you're doing is bad ultimately how are we going to understand what is truly good right interesting yeah, yeah. that's kind of a, a little bit of a subjective definition yeah that'll be it is that'll be interesting to unpack right yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so i mean uh, as a an older millennial um i i can't stand the millennial tags that are given uh, there's a guy out there named Jason Dorsey, uh, spoke at a, a summit that attended a couple of years back that does a lot of breaking down of generations. And he's saying like the millennial generation is splitting where like half of them are doing everything that they're supposed to maybe a couple of years late, but they're still going through all the benchmarks and everything. And then there's the other half that are like the, the butt of millennial jokes a lot of <laughs> yeah, times yeah. that they're living in their parents' basement yeah, all of those yeah. easy pot shot targets mm -hmm. that, come on, we got to get past we that. Gotta <laughs> we got to get past that. Um, yeah. But I think I could objectively look around and say that from a moral standpoint, there's no consistency across the board no. right now no. for just about anybody, millennial, spanning generations, whatever the case might be, yeah. Um, yeah. that ultimately would be a threat of what's good yeah. because what's good seems like it could be subjective. Yeah, very subjective. And you'll see everyone is trying their best to live out what is good to them. Yeah. Right? But the problem is what ultimately is good, right? What is good? And then the lastly, what is beautiful? And uh, Solomon, which, you know, uh, Jeff has been talking about and, uh, um, Pat, uh, your last, uh, yeah, last, last week, week again, midweek at the compass, we, we talked about this guy named Solomon. So if you need a little bit more backstory, you can check that one out. Uh, you could also go onto youtube.com slash the, the compass church. church. There's my shameless plug. There's your, there's your plug, but there's a playlist there of this thing called explore God. Um, Solomon is a biblical character. If you don't know and aren't familiar, we're not trying to hide the eight ball here. Uh, no. not trying to do no. any sort of bait and switch. Um, uh, but we want to let you know that 
there's some content in that Explore God channel. Uh, week one was, you know, does life have a purpose? Uh, and Jeff talked a lot about Solomon. So uh, we're going to get just another kind of high level flyover here. But if you want some more detail of some of what he saw and lived out, love to have you go check that out. Yeah, yeah. And so Solomon, he, he kind of talked about all is meaningless. Nothing is beautiful. And uh, he's come to the end of the place where he's tried everything. And he, he says nothing's beautiful. Um, he was obviously in a dark season in yeah. his life. And he does point back to God. And uh, that's the point I think eventually we're going to get to, right? Yeah, and it's really interesting because, you know, for Solomon to say that nothing's beautiful, this is a guy that had materialistically the overachiever in me is like he had everything uh, all the money all the wisdom mm -hmm. um, women like you couldn't believe all of those sorts of things like he just had available and he saw all this all the gold that he had stockpiled everything that he wanted in life so it's like no man there's there's nothing that's beautiful it's all vanity, all vanity. Uh, meaningless another word that a lot of time gets yeah. tossed about for um, how Solomon felt about all of these different you know party lifestyle aspects yeah. yeah no beauty no beauty no beauty except there it is there's an except there's a giant but dot 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 yeah 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 that's gonna be coming next week. Yeah. So next week, you know, we, we teach a little bit here of, you know, there, there's this thread of the meaning of life that spans generations, that spans centuries, is everybody seems to be looking for truth, goodness, and beauty. So I think what we have to do is sit down and talk about what those things are. What is truth? Mm -hmm. That's going to be a really That's, dangerous conversation that we yeah, get to have. Yeah. Uh, that'll be really interesting to see yeah. where it goes and where we land yeah. with it. Yeah. But defining that, defining goodness in a way that is different than what's good for me versus what's good for you yeah. versus what's good for you. That's going to be a little bit of a, an interesting dynamic as well. And then beauty, right? Is there more than just surface level? Is there more to the meaning of life than just being aesthetically pleasing. Yeah. yeah. Um, is there something deeper rooted than that? Yeah. Oh, this is going to be some good stuff next week. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited for you to come back and join us next week where we're going to continue our conversation on the search of meaning here at midweek at the compass. We'll see you then.